When the BBC asked if I wanted to host a big new game show, ask a few questions and give away lots of money, I said, of course I do, as long as it doesn't have anything to do with members of the public or heights. <laughs> I'm terrible at negotiating. <laughs> Welcome to 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. This is 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show, where just one wrong answer stands between our contestants and a deeply unpleasant exit from the show. The rules are child's play. Answer a question correctly, and they're through to the next round. Make it to the end of the show, and they'll win £10,000. But here's where it gets super fun. Answer just one question wrong, and their game's over. Let's meet the eight people who've had to beef up their life insurance just so they can play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. My name's Laura, and I'm just right for the show. <laughs> My friends call me nuts. I'm scared, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, I expected it to be uh, that big. My name is Ryan. I love being the centre of attention. It's almost like oxygen to me. I would consider myself to be very much a natural leader among men. <gasps> I can't believe that. It's huge. My name's John from Swansea, and I'm a swimming coach. If I won the £10,000, I will give it to my mother. I'm not afraid of heights, so just bring it on. My name's Jenny. I'm not confident. Wow. <laughs> this is to prove to my children that I can do anything, which means they can too. My name is Kat. I'm very scared of heights. So we've all got to stand out there. If I win the prize money, I'm going to be telling my boyfriend that he has to marry me. I really want it. I really, really want it. It's a bit big, isn't it? I'm rich. I prepared for 101 ways to leave a game show by standing in a wood full of budding bluebells and absorbing their energy. I'm much more terrified of the problems that face the planet than I am of the terrifying tower behind me. My name's Bob. I'm from Newcastle. Well, I may be the oldest contestant in the show, but I'm very, very young at heart. Looking at the other contestants, I've already won. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm Del, and I'm a trainee maths teacher. People can think I'm a bit of a pushover, but I'm, I'm not. Oh, no! I think I can win this. Hands down, I think I can win it. It's the glory. I want the glory more than the money. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Today, you will face five rounds of questions. After each of those rounds, one of you is going over the side and off the show for good. Whoever's still standing at the end wins £10,000, which you might like to spend on scented candles, a personal monsieur, and some CDs of panpipe music in a vain attempt to get over this ordeal. <laughs> You're as ready as you'll ever be. Let's crack on with round one. Here we go. In a moment, I'm going to ask you a question and give you eight answers. Seven are right, but pick the wrong one and... You know what? I'm not one for scaremongering, so I'll leave that duty to a woman who, just before the show, told me, Steve, I'm very much for scaremongering. It's my co-host, Nimone. When I first told Health and Safety here about today's first exit, they didn't actually say yes. In fact, they said no, which I took as maybe and then went ahead anyway. It's number seven on the list of 101 ways to leave a game show. Take the plunge. The answers are attached to rotating platforms. The platform attached to the wrong answer will slowly tip that unlucky contestant into the icy depths below. And worse than that... <laughs> ..they'll be off the show forever. She's a very dangerous woman. Let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. I'm going to ask you a question, but first, because teachers just nipped out to go to the loo, I'm going to give you the answers. They're written on the back of my hand. <laughs> Rome, Antwerp, Mexico City, Stockholm, Tokyo, Madrid, Helsinki, Melbourne. Seven of these cities have hosted the modern Summer Olympic Games. Do you know which ones? 
Remember, you need to pick very carefully if you don't want to take the plunge. Picking carefully means avoiding the wrong answer. Dad, what do you go for? Um, I went for Rome. Rome? Is yeah. that an educated guess, um, or do you know? I don't know about educated, but it's a guess. Bob, what about yourself? I've went for Mexico City. Um, I do believe that they did host the Olympic Games there. What about yourself, Kat? I've gone for Melbourne, because Australians are really good at sports. <laughs> Rich, what about yourself? I've gone for Madrid. Why ever so? Well, sport really isn't my strong point, but I think Madrid is a smashing place to have a, have a bit of a celebration, isn't it? OK, we'll see, we'll see. Jenny, what about yourself? I pressed the wrong one and went for Helsinki. What did you mean to press? <laughs> I meant to press Melbourne. <laughs> uh, so, what are you thinking with Helsinki? It's a bit cold. Yeah, for the summer games, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. You never know, you never know. Ryan, what do you go for? Uh, I went for Madrid, also. The same uh, concept as Rich? Is this a lovely place to have them? Pretty much, yeah, nice and warm. Laura? I went for Tokyo. Tokyo? Why? Basically, because it was the only one that jumped out at me. John, what do you go for? Uh, Melbourne. Um, well, I thought, I was 99.9% .9 sure that it was the right answer, so I thought, well, go for it. OK, the situation reads like this. We have two tiebreakers, which means Dal, Bob, Jenny, Laura, you all have the answers you wanted. Why not go get strapped in for the plunge? OK, Kat, John, you both want Melbourne. Only one of you can have it. That's going to be the person who answers this tiebreaker question correctly. The British sprinter who won the 100 metres gold medal at the 1992 Olympics is Limford who? John. Christy. It is Christy, which means Melbourne belongs to you. Why don't you go get ready for the plunge? Well done, John. So, Rich, Ryan, you both want Madrid because it's such a lovely place, but only one of you can have it. That's the person who answers this tiebreaker question. The Fosbury flop is best associated with which Olympic athletic event? Rich. High jump. Which means Madrid is yours. Congratulations, sir. Off you go, join the others. Well done. OK, Kat, Ryan, back to square one for you guys. Two options left, Antwerp and Stockholm. Both of them might be right, one of them might be wrong. Exercise caution, please make your choices. Which of these cities have hosted the modern Summer Olympic Games? Made your choices? Yeah? Kat, yeah. what did you go for? Stockholm. Any reasons why? I just guessed. I admire your honesty. Brian, what about yourself? I went for Antwerp. Ah, that makes things nice and easy. Everybody's got their own answer, so who's staying and who's leaving? 101 ways to leave a game show. Eight different answers, seven are correct. But someone's just picked the wrong one. Awaiting that individual is an 80-foot plunge into the icy water and off the show. Time to find out whose lucky day it isn't. <sighs> nice day for it. Can I just say, you're all remarkably calm considering you're all lying on the world's most dangerous sun loungers. Eight answers, seven are correct. One has the word plunge written all over it. I asked you which cities had hosted the Summer Olympic Games. I can now reveal one of the correct answers is Tokyo. Hey. Well done, Laura. Happy Are you? <laughs> Chilled as I come. I am competitive, Miss Competitive number one. Trust me, nobody is standing in my way of the winnings. The 1952 Olympics were held in... Helsinki, Jenny. Oh. <laughs> you didn't really mean that, did you? No. 
<laughs> but you are one step closer to £10,000. I did not think Helsinki was going to be called Alice. I cannot believe I'm still here. The next correct answer is... Mexico City, Bob. Oh, you know what? I love you. You're very kind. Thank you. It's the fear of the unknown again, and that's what really, really freaks you out on, up there. In 1956, the Summer Olympics were held in... <laughs> when I first chose, I was 99.9% .9 sure, but when I was up there, I was like more 50 50. I was like, oh no, not gonna happen. Just relax, just relax. Oh, depressed. Oh, God. Just relax, oh, darling. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the next correct answer is. Rome. Oh, thank God! Oh, thank God! You oh, guessed well, God. girl. The 1960 Olympics oh. were held there. I was like, oh no, it could be me. You just, you just don't know, do you? Because I wasn't even sure about my answer. Is Stockholm. Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. thank You're going to be so okay. Much. Oh, my God. I really freaked out. I thought I was going and I panicked, shaking, actually shaking. So now I'm just, I'm so chuffed. I'm through to the second round. Awesome. Bring it on. So that leaves us with Ryan and Rich. Could we please put them in their dangle position? Well, see you later, gents, Ryan. Goodness <laughs> gracious me. Oh, my Jiminy Crickets. <laughs> OK, Ryan, you ended up with Antwerp, the consolation prize, because Rich stole Madrid off you. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in five, four, three, Two, one. Wrong answer. Madrid. It's a bit of a bummer going out in the first round. Madrid! <laughs> a little bit eye-watering. <laughs> it's a bit of a leap into the unknown. Just how cold is that water? That was the worst bit, was being plunged into the water. It looks lovely because it's a nice blue colour. But it was a bit nippy. Guys, you're all going through the round two! Clearly elated because they're one step closer to £10,000. I should mention you're all one step closer to an even more horrific exit, so... Peaks and troughs in round two. Well, that was hardcore. How was it for you, Ryan? By losing the tiebreaker to Rich, you won. 
Does that make your brain hurt? Yeah, it does a little, yeah, but uh, I'm very grateful that it went that way. OK, in a moment, another tricky question. This time with seven answers. Six are correct, but one will be wrong. It's simple enough. Avoid that wrong answer. Should you ignore my advice, let's find out what will happen. Here to tell us is the delightful, the delectable, the demonic Namon. This is exit number 99, and it's called Steve's Big Boot. And today, the role of Steve will be played by Steve. Thanks, Steve. Each contestant stands on the edge of the tower. Whoever chooses the wrong answer gets booted over the edge and off the show. Oh. It's big. It's humiliating. It's Steve's big boot. I am just a messenger. I take no pleasure in this, guys. Let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Antarctic Monkeys, Con Jovi, The Rolling Clones, Abba Cadabra, The Fillers, Fake That, Kasabi 8. Here's a question. Six of these are genuine tribute bands. Can you find them? Seven answers. Only six are genuine tribute bands. Remember, you need to choose wisely if you don't want my size 25 where the sun don't shine. Everybody chosen? Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Dal. I went for Fake That. Fake That. Have you seen them? Are they real? It just sounds quite convincing. Bob, what do you go for? The Roland Clones. Any reason? Sounds real to me. Cat, what do you go for? Fake that. Fake that. Yeah. Popular so far. Jenny. Antarctic monkeys. I'm sticking with the cold theme. <laughs> We're well on the last round for you, yeah. <laughs> Brian, how about yourself? I've also gone for Antarctic monkeys. You're gonna have to fight it out with the Ice Queen for uh, <laughs> the Antarctic monkeys. <laughs> Laura, what'd you go for? The fillers. What's your thoughts behind that? Well, I think I've actually seen it in a Sunday newspaper, oh, recently okay. advertised. John, what'd you go for? The Antarctic Monkeys. They're getting popular, yeah. Um, I like the Arctic Monkeys, but also I like Antarctica, so... These are terrible reasons, I gotta be honest. <laughs> Some of them are really <laughs> ropey. <laughs> Dal and Cat are going to have to fight it out for fake that. Jerry, Ryan and John all want Antarctic monkeys, but that means Bob <laughs> has the rolling clones and Laura has the fillers. Congratulations. Why don't you go and take your positions and wait for my size 25? <laughs> OK, Dal, Cat, fake that are up for grabs. Here's your tiebreaker question. Fingers on buzzers, please. What is the name of the lead singer of the Rolling Stones? <laughs> no? People of our generation. I know, look at what I do. Generation? Right? What are you, 12? <laughs> it's... Oh, go on. Mick Jagger? <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Sorry. Congratulations, fake that are yours. Thanks. You may go and take your place with the others. Jenny, Ryan, John, you're currently all tied for Antarctic Monkeys. Fingers on buzzers, here's your tiebreaker question. Bon Jovi's 1986 UK Top 10 hit was titled Living on a What? Jenny. Prayer. Is correct. Antarctic Monkeys are yours. Off you go. Well done. So that means Dal, Ryan, John, back to square one for you guys. Remaining are Con Jovi. Abba Kadabra and Kasabi 8. All three of those could be right, you never know. But there's a good chance one of them is very wrong. Chosen? Del, what'd you go for? Um, I went for Abba Kadabra. Reason? Um, I think I need all the hop I can get, and it sounds a little bit magical. Yeah, it does. So hopefully uh, it, it should help me out, but we'll see. Ryan, what'd you go for? I've gone for Con Jovi. Con Jovi. What's your thoughts? Um, seems like a reasonable name to have. John, what do you go for? I've also gone for Abacadabra. Okay, Dal's chosen that. What were your reasons? 
basically, my mother listens to ABBA like all the time in the car, so I'm sort of sick of it, so uh, it's in my head, so. Wow, these choices just don't make any sense. But the reality is, Dal wants it too, so we have a tie-break situation, but before that, Ryan, go away for my big boot. Okay, Abba Kadabra. You both want it, only one of you can have it. That's gonna be the person who answers this next question correctly. The title of Abba's 1980 UK number one single is Super What? John. Trooper. Correct, rather fittingly for Abba Kadabra, which is now yours. That means, Dal, you've been left with Kasabiant. Fingers it's a, crossed. It's a crazy game, yeah. anything can happen, exactly. so good luck. Everybody has an answer. It's time to see who's staying and who's leaving 101 ways to leave a game show. So we've got seven answers. Six are correct, one is wrong. And whoever chooses that, it will just be their egos that are bruised. Who's one step closer to 10,000 pounds and who's going to need a cushion for the journey home? Normally, I would say something witty and inspirational at this point, but Let's not pretend this is going to be fun for anyone. Jenny, you decided to continue your cold theme after Helsinki by choosing Antarctic monkeys. Confident? No. No? Good luck. Ryan, Con Jovi. I can't help but feel this is no way for a man to get kicked off a game show. No, definitely not. Bobby! <laughs> You're a big fella. So are you, Steve. Well, I feel like I may still need a run-up in order to kick you off this tower, if the rolling clones are wrong, that is. Abba Kadabra, which uh, you chose because your mum's a big Abba fan. Yeah. How much of an Abba fan is she? If I was to kick you in the bum, do you think she'd feel it? Yeah. I sense a quiet confidence in you. I can't help but feel you're the lady to beat. Still confident about the fillers? Definitely. Kat, you all right? I'm good, thank you, Steve. Confident with fake that? I, I'm really confident, actually, and if I get it wrong, I know that my supervisor's just going to kill me because she's a massive Taylor fan. Dal, you all right? I think so. Bottom of the barrel, because <laughs> they be ain't. Do you know what? Out of all the bands I've just mentioned, they're by far the best band. You think so? Oh, easily. <laughs> but then again, maybe they're too good to have a tribute band. It's a tricky one. Okie dokie. Guys. Assume the position, please. I asked you, which of these bands are genuine tribute acts? One is not. The first correct answer is... The Rolling Clones. Get in. Well done, Bob. Get in. I am so pleased to be through to the next round. I am, uh, you know, it's one step closer to 10,000 pounds. The next correct answer is... Jovi. Brian, step back from the edge. Yes! <laughs> Steve's big boot was no way to leave that game show, so I was uh, more than relieved when he called out my name second. The next genuine tribute act is... <laughs> the Fillers! Dancer. Laura, you oh, won't oh. feel the force of my size 25. I mean, a big boot up your bum, God. I've had that all my life. <laughs> Gives me motivation. <laughs> Next, with... Antarctic monkeys, Jenny. You're not going anywhere yet. <laughs> yes. When Steve told me that it was the Antarctic monkeys, it was just, yes, <laughs> it was amazing. 
That leaves us with John, Kat, and Dal. One of you will be getting the boot very soon. But it's not the person who chose Abacadabra. Yes! Happy oh. with that? God. Those cross fingers work. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm a swimming coach, I'm a swimming teacher, I can dive, I can swim in water, but I was just getting proper nervous. <sighs> okay. Kat, you chose fake that. Dal, you got left with Kasabi Ain't. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in five. Four. Three. Two. One. <laughs> the wrong answer is... Kasabi oh, 8. What a way to leave a game show. I know. How embarrassing is that? How embarrassing of all the ways to leave. <laughs> I am absolutely gutted. I so wanted to get further than this. I had a feeling it was wrong, you know? I just had a bit of a gut feeling. I'm guessing you ain't going to be listening to Kasabian any time. Oh, no, definitely not. You guys are one step closer to £10,000. Oh, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Well done, guys. Whoa! Everybody stay calm. That's not a good noise. That means one of you are about to leave the show via the emergency exit. Whoa. Here's how this works. I'm going to pick a name from my barrel of balls. Then I'm going to ask that person a question. Get the question right and you stay in the game. But get it wrong and you'll be dropped through that hole like a sack of spuds. You've got 80 feet before you hit the floor. And it's not a smooth journey either. There's some unpleasant surprises. Waiting for you all the way down there is Namone. Hi, Namone. Hi, Steve. If you're face to face with Namone, you know what that means. You're off the show for good. Let's see who's staying and who's leaving 101 ways to leave a game show. <laughs> OK, I'm going to dive into my barrel of balls. Here comes the first name and the first question. Cat. <laughs> Colonel Mustard, Miss Scarlet and Professor Plum all feature in which original UK board game? Cluedo. It's absolutely correct. Well done. The ball goes back in the barrel. <laughs> Here we go. Laura! You big on sport, Laura? Oh, great. Not. Which sport is commonly associated with Ricky Hatton, Amir Khan and David Hay? Boxing. Absolutely correct. Spin them. Well done, Laura. <laughs> Ryan! This question may send you on an 80-foot journey downwards. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived is a phrase used to remember the fate of the wives of which King of England? Is it Henry VIII? Is that a guess? You're a very lucky man, that's right. <laughs> Spin him! Ah, oh, sigh of relief. You're going back in. Right. Bob! All of Newcastle is watching. 
All got their fingers crossed for their big pink shirt wearing giant. Live forever. Some might say, and don't look back in anger, we're all UK top 10 hits for which band? Oh, yeah. Who is this? I guess? Yeah. <laughs> You're a very lucky man, that's correct. Well done. Spin them. <laughs> Not again, please. We haven't seen Jenny or John at all yet. See if fate will remedy that. Boom. Cat! Second time lucky for Cat. According to popular legend, what was the name of King Arthur's sword? If you get this wrong, you're off the show. And that chance of winning £10,000 is gone. Anything? I'm really sorry, Steve, but I just don't know the answer. Not as sorry as I am, Kat. We're about to lose you. Oh. Have a good journey. It was great meeting you. Wave goodbye to Kat, everyone. Bye, You're a sweet girl. Bye. We're gonna miss Bye. you. I love you. Say prep. Oh. By the way, Kat. The answer was Excalibur. <laughs> he is in a hell of a mess. It's not one of my things, but I had no idea, absolutely no idea I'm gutted. Guys, we're going to miss Kat, she was a top girl, but for the moment, rejoice, you're one step closer to £10,000. Yes. Well done. OK, let's traumatise another contestant in round three. I thought you were going down our emergency exit then, I really did. Where did you dredge Oasis from? It took forever. My brain just emptied of everything. If you'd asked me name at that time, I would have forgot that as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to have another exciting round, for sure. But what does the next exit promise, Steve? Well, someone once sang, things can only get better. Here's a lady who prefers the B-side, things can only get worse. It's Nemo. Number 56 on the list of 101 ways to leave a game show is Human Fling, a gigantic catapult. Five contestants lie back in five seats. Whoever gets the single seat attached to the wrong answer will be flung 20 feet into the air, faster than you can say, not bound by European safety standards. It's unbelievable. It's unforgettable. It's untested. It's time to play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Here are the answers. Blinking idiot. Laughing stock. Foregone conclusion. Green-eyed monster. What the dickens? Four of these phrases are said to have been first recorded in the works of William Shakespeare. Do you know them? Make your choices now, please. Four of these phrases are said to have been first recorded in the works of William Shakespeare. Remember, get it wrong and you'll be hurtling through space into freezing cold water. Have you all chosen? Yes. OK, Bob, what'd you go for? Blinking idiot. Why ever so? It seemed more adapt to me, so that's why I went for blinking idiot. Jenny, what'd you go for? Foregone conclusion. Why'd you think? Foregone conclusion that somebody's going to win. <laughs> Ryan, what choice have you made? I've gone for laughing stock. What are your reasons behind that? I thought that would be one of the more likely ones to be included in one of his works. Laura, what do you choose? Foregone conclusion. Oh, right, so it's not a foregone conclusion, Jenny. You're gonna have to fight her out for that one. John, what'd you go for? I went for also laughing stock. Ah, right. I basically went, hip, dip, sky blue, I just don't have a clue. 
I love you, John. Don't go change it. <laughs> Which means, Bob, you're the only person to choose blinking idiot. I hope it serves you well. Off you go to get flung. OK, we've got two tie-break situations. Let's deal with Jenny and Laura first. You both want foregone conclusions. Here's your tie-breaker question. Which of Shakespeare's works is referred to as the Scottish play? Jenny. Macbeth. Is correct. <laughs> foregone conclusion is yours. Off you go to get flung. Where are you from again, Laura? Not Scotland, obviously. You are from Scotland, aren't you? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> OK, chill for a moment, Laura. Ryan, John, you both want laughing stock. Only one of you can have it. Fingers on buzzers. Here's your tiebreaker question. In the 1998 film Shakespeare in Love, which actress played Viola, the object of the bard's desires? Ryan. Is it Gwyneth Paltrow? It was Gwyneth Paltrow, which means laughing stock is all yours. Off you go. Join the others. Well done. That leaves us with a green-eyed monster and what the dickens. Both of these may be right. One of them might be wrong. Make your decisions now, guys. Which do you think were coined by William Shakespeare? Avoid the one which is not. Chosen? Yeah. Laura? What the dickens am I doing here? <laughs> John, what do you go for? Um, I went for a green egg monster. OK, well, you've made my job really easy. No tiebreaker question. Green egg monster's all yours. What the dickens is all yours, Laura. Well done. Everybody has an answer. It's time to see who's staying and who's leaving 101 ways to leave a game show. This time, just five answers. Four are correct. One very isn't. Who's going up in the world before splashing down into the freezing cold pool? Guys, try and stay calm. Just lie back and think of the horrific exit that awaits one of you. Bob. You've had every answer you've wanted so far because nobody else wanted them. Are you a genius or are this lot blinking idiots? No, I'm the blinking idiot. Ryan, you chose laughing stock. You don't want to be wrong with an answer like that, do you? Definitely not. Jenny, foregone conclusion. What do you think the family are making of this right now? Mummy may about to be flung. <laughs> I think they'll be highly amused. Johnny! <laughs> Green Eyed Monster. Yep. <laughs> you were actually left that after Ryan stole laughing stock from yep. you. Was the Incredible Hulk in any Shakespearean <laughs> plays? <laughs> no. no, not at all. Hey, Laura. Hello. What the Dickens? Charles Dickens uh, wrote in the 19th century. Shakespeare, a couple of hundred years earlier. This, out of all my questions, is the least confident one. Should we get this over with? Definitely. OK, let's do it. All right, guys. I gave you five phrases. Four were first recorded in the works of William Shakespeare. Blinking idiot, Bob, you say. <laughs> As I'm sure you knew, Bob, it's from The Merchant of Venice. I was absolutely petrified in there, not because of the exit, because I didn't know what was going to happen. Here's a line from Othello. Oh, come on. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. <laughs> Jenny, yes. come join Bob. You're going through. <laughs> I can't believe I'm in the final four. One of us four are going to have 10 grand. That's just amazing. <laughs> oh, my God.
Three answers left, two are right, one is wrong. No, no. What the dickens, Laura? You're joking. No, I'm not. Oh, You're yeah, closer to 10,000 so... pounds. <laughs> oh, my God. I really wasn't happy with that one. That was, that was like, I was going. I, I thought I was gone. Seriously. So that leaves Ryan and John. Oh, no. <laughs> one of you is staying, and we'll join the others in round four. The other is leaving. Oh, my God, come on. For good. Ryan, you won laughing stock in a tiebreaker with John. Not happy. Not happy. John, that left you the green eyed monster. I'm going to tell you the wrong answer in five, four, three, two. One. Wrong answer. <laughs> Laughing stock. Uh, uh, <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, where for Arthur, Ryan? He's in the pool, love. <laughs> Flying Ryan, how was that? Uh, not pleasant. It happened, it's unfortunate, but it was a total guess anyway. We started with eight, four remain. One of you is tantalisingly close to £10,000. Yes! yes! <laughs> Let's crack on with round four. That was awesome. <laughs> Guys, wasn't Ryan's exit one of the best things you've ever seen? Fantastic. <laughs> it was like Superman meets Aquaman. It was incredible, wasn't it? John, you were on the front line there. How are you feeling to be still in the game? Oh. Absolutely fantastic, can't believe it. In a moment, another question, now with four answers. Three are correct and one is wrong. All you have to do is avoid the wrong answer. To tell us what's lined up for you next, here's the woman with the face of an angel and the mind of some kind of cyborg sent from the future to wreak havoc on light entertainment. It's Nemo. Four beaten up old cars attached to four different answers. The contestant sitting in the car attached to the wrong answer will be yanked up the ramp at a startling rate of acceleration, fly through the air, crash into the water, and be off the show forever. And for added fun, I've welded the door shut. Exit 70 is four-wheel dive. Let's play 101 Ways to Leave a Game Show. Nadine, Cara, Rosina, Nicola. Three of these are types of potato. Do you know which ones? Make your selection now, please. If you want to make it through to the final challenge and the chance to take home 10,000 big ones, pick very carefully. Three are potatoes, one is something else altogether. Bob, what'd you go for? I went for Cara. Are you a man who knows one spud from the next? Possibly. Jenny, what'd you go for? Nadine. Is this an informed decision or is it potluck, much like Bob's? First on the list. <laughs> Laura, this is a tough one, isn't it? What'd you go for? Rosina. Rosina. Does that sound like a potato? None of them do. They sound more like girls aloud. <laughs> <laughs> John, what'd you go for? I also went for Rosina. It sounds a little bit different and... Mm. Potatoey? 
Well, you're going to have to fight it out with Laura for the right to own Rosina. But for the moment, Bob, Cara is yours. Jenny, Nadine is yours. Enjoy them. Go sit yourself in a car. So, you both want Rosina. Only one of you can have it. And that's a person who answers this next question correctly. Oyster, chestnut, and button are all types of which vegetable? Oh, Laura. No. Mushroom. Correct. Rosina is yours, which means, John, you've been left with Nicola. How do you feel about that? Well, it's my best friend's name, so... Is your best friend a potato? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, everybody has an answer. It's time to see who's staying and who's leaving 101 ways to leave a game show. The tension is mounting. Four petrified people climbing into four mangled old cars. But for one of them, it'll be the last car they ever get into on this show. Who's gone and picked that wrong answer? Three correct answers, one wrong answer, no second chances. Jenny, you chose Nadine. You feeling confident? I'm all revved up. Yeah, ready to go? Ready to go. Bob, I sense a great change in you. Are you a car enthusiast? I used to be a chauffeur, Steve. Did you? I did indeed. Fancy jumping in the back. I think I'll take the bus. Okay. Laura, congratulations. You stole Rosina from John. Confident with that choice? Absolutely not. No? I work for a well-known supermarket and I see potatoes every day and I don't recall Rosina being one of them. John, you currently have Nicola. Can you visualise yourself in the final? Starting to visualise now and I'm getting really excited but still ridiculously nervous, so... That's what we like to see. OK. Drivers, your carriage awaits when you jump in them. I gave you four answers. Three are types of potato, one is not. The first right answer is... Get in! You're in the final, Bob. Get in! Be careful with that car, it's vintage. I am in the fame and I can't believe it. I am so excited. The next spud you're going to really, really like is... And Nadine. You're in the yeah. final, Jenny. <laughs> I'm in the final, I can't believe it. I just, it's, uh, it's incredible, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Laura, you beat John in the tiebreaker <laughs> to secure Rosina. John, that left you with Nicola. I'm going to reveal the wrong answer in five. Four. Three. Two. One. Wrong answer. Rosina. Yes! <laughs> you say that you wanted to go out in a car? Definitely, and what? <laughs> to go out on that exit was just phenomenal, that I couldn't have asked for a better exit. <laughs> I felt like Daisy at the Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> Rosina isn't a potato, it's my grandmother. Hi, Nan. John, come and join the others, you finalist. This 
this is the big one, the final. It's been a scary old day, but it's about to be an even scarier night. In mere moments, one of you will be £10,000 richer. Bob, you have been a big, lovable pink giant throughout the show. <laughs> what would 10 grand mean to you? Well, because I'm going to give £1,000 to a local charity. Fantastic. And the other 9000 uh, my partner, Debbie, is going to uh, take a large chunk of that for our wedding. Jenny, it is a serious amount of cash, isn't it? My family would love me forever for it. I'm assuming you're not doing it just for your family, but for womankind as well. I know, but I'm left with a Geordie and a Welsh guy. No offence. <laughs> Some taken. <laughs> John, I'm a little bit worried about you. Why? £10,000 in the hands of a single 20-year-old Welshman is dangerous. Well, to be honest, the money isn't for me, it's for my mother. This is for her, so as to show that how much she means to me, so... Go for you, John. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Cross them for all of you. You've been fantastic, so good luck to every single one of you. This time, though, the game is different, so please listen very carefully. I'm going to ask one last question and give you three answers. Two of the answers are completely and utterly wrong. Only one is correct. You need to find that one correct answer if you want to win the big prize. Namon, what are you going to make them endure to win this money? Drilled into the deck are three trap doors. The two trap doors attached to the wrong answers will crash open, sending those contestants plummeting into the inky dark night and the freezing cold pool. It's exit 101 itself, the trap door. And whoever is left standing will walk away with £10,000. Let's play 101 ways to leave a game show. For £10,000, here are three answers. Only one is correct. Mel Gibson. Nicole Kidman. Hugh Jackman. One of these celebrities was born in Australia. Which one? Make your selections now, please. Remember, this time you're looking for the one correct answer. You're looking for the one celebrity that was born in Australia. Get the right answer. You've just won £10,000. Have you all chosen? We have indeed, yeah. Bob, what'd you go for? I went for Nicole Kidman. Any reasons? Mel Gibson's a little bit too obvious, I think. Mm. And Hugh Jackman, haven't got a clue. Jenny, who'd you go for? Mel Gibson. Obviously, it didn't feel too obvious for you. No, it didn't. I know that he's American now, but I'm, I'm sure that his heritage is, is Australia. I don't know. OK, we'll find out. John, what would you go for? Um, I also chose Nicole Kidman. Oh, right. What are your reasons? Well, I quite like, like, reading magazines. Yeah. I'm sure it's, uh, like, born in Australia. OK. It might be my mind doing stupid things, but... Fingers, toes, mm. pretty much everything's crossed. Well, hopefully your mind will be doing intelligent things soon because you're about to lock horns with Bob. But in the meantime, Jenny, you chose Mel Gibson, you've got him. Why don't you and Mel go stand on a trapdoor? Right, you both want Nicole Kidman. This answer could mean the difference between going home with nothing and going home with £10,000. So I'll ask you to put your fingers on the buzzers. Here's your tiebreaker question. Which Australian had a UK hit single in 1960 with Timey Kangaroo Downsport? Bob. Rolf Harris. Is correct, which means Nicole Kidman belongs to your good self. Leaving John with Hugh Jackman. How do you feel about that? Um, well, uh, terrible. Absolutely awful, cos... Uh, no, just terrible, cos I knew that. I knew that type of question as well, so... Uh. Everybody has an answer. Let's see who's leaving and who's winning 101 ways to leave a game show. Everybody has made their selection. They're standing on their answers, desperately trying to remain calm. One of them is about to be £10,000 richer. Who's it going to be? It's 
three contestants, three trap doors, and 10,000 pounds going to the one woman or man left standing. Jenny, you chose Mark Gibson. The man seems as Australian as Vegemite. Would you agree? Are you confident? No. I really, I, I thought Nicole Kidman was born in England. Um, that's why I went for Mel Gibson. You thought Mel Gibson was a bit obvious, Bob? I did, yeah. Um, I'm getting the answer I wanted. So if it's wrong and I go down, it's down to me. John, you were left with Hugh Jackman, which incensed you. You're not very happy about it. Oh, God, no. I am really not happy. OK. I asked you which celebrity was born in Australia. I'm going to tell you the first wrong answer in... five... four... three... two... one... Mel Gibson. <laughs> Mel Gibson was born in New York. Oh, God. And moved to Australia when he was 12. That's why Jenny just left. Oh. oh, God. That leaves Bob and John. One of you will be tonight's champion and win 10,000 pounds. The other will leave with nothing. I asked you which celebrity was born in Australia. Bob, you won Nicole Kidman. John, you got left with Hugh Jackman. I'm going to reveal the right answer in... Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Right answer is Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Watching John win ten thousand pounds on one hundred and one ways to yeah. the game show. From myself and Damone, good night. Bye. Would you like to take the stairs down? Oh. Yeah.